Hey, welcome back. So in here, we're going to look at accessors and what they are. So an accessor here is this name right there, which is public. So there are a few of these uh, accessors that you need to know about. So the first one is public, of course, and then we have private, and then we have protected, and then we have static like this. So hopefully uh, these are all we have, yes. So there's public, there's private, protected, and static. So let's go through each one of these and what exactly they mean. Why some uh, variables can be public and others private and so on. Now let's start with, um, with private. I think that uh, will give us more understanding as opposed to public. So if I set a variable as private in here, what this means is that I cannot access this item outside this particular class. So let me give an example of what I'm talking about here. So let's begin by saying price. This one is a private. So that's a private property right there. Okay. So maybe for now let's use total as well private like this so private total private price now if i run this right now i will not get an error of any kind so refresh nothing okay so we are good to go because now remember that i'm using this in here so let me try and and do something here by the way what private means is that once you're outside the class, you cannot have access to this item. But the functions inside here, because you might think, uh, then what's the use if I can't access it? Well, it means the functions inside the class can still access it. The same way this total is accessing that total there, uh, this is pro uh, valid and will not create an error. But if I try to access this item from outside the class itself, I will have problems. So let me try that here by saying echo book total. Yes, like that. So if I come here and refresh, obviously I'll get a fatal error and it will say cannot access private property. Yeah, I can't access that. And it's the same for price. I cannot access it from outside. But I can still access it from inside here. So what I can do, for example, this total is private, right? So I can't have access to it, but I can still calculate the total from inside and then return the total from inside because this function is inside the class. So it, it has privileges to access total. So I can use this function right here to access that item there. So if instead of trying to access it directly there, I use read instead, I am going to get my value. So I will say that read like this. And if I come back here and refresh, I get my 200. So I am accessing the private item indirectly using a public item and accessing it from the outside. So this is how you access things from the outside that are private. So you'd think, uh, but why would you want uh, to hide something like this in here and not have it uh, be accessible from outside? Well, there are certain times when a function is solely going to be used by other functions that are inside the class. So in that case, there's no need for that function to be accessible outside the class since no, uh, none of the items outside the class will ever need to access it. So you limit. So the rule is that uh, you limit as much as possible the access to the items inside the class because the class by definition is supposed to be self-contained. It has to limit access to the outside world. You are putting these, these items in here to encapsulate them, right? Uh, that's one of the pillars of object-oriented programming. You want to encapsulate things and put them inside one item, inside one package, so that the outside world just needs to see just a few things and then the rest of it is done internally. 
So this is why you limit the access as much as possible. So if an item can be private, then put it as private and not public. Okay. So as you do more of object oriented programming, you see why it's important for some things to be private and others to be uh, public. So by definition, uh, if you see these functions, I didn't put an accessor here. And if you don't put an accessor, then by default, they are known as public. So having no accessor and having public like this is exactly the same thing. So, but it is good to actually put the accessor there so that in future, when you're going through the code, you don't get confused as to what is going on. You will know right there that this is public and this is private. Now, in the same way, that I cannot access a private property. If I put this as private as well, I have the same problem. So if that one, that function is private, if I try to access it, of course, it's going to say call to private method. Now, remember a function is called a method inside a class. So this is why it's saying method. So call to private method read. So you're not allowed to call a private method here. Now, since I, this is a private one and I have a public function here. I can use the result of this and push it inside a public one and then access it from outside the same way we did with the variable. Okay, so that's what private is all about. Now public, of course, I'm sure you've, as you've seen by now, public means the function is accessible from inside the class or from outside the class. So no explanation required there. This is just a public entity and anyone from any place can access it as long as they have access to the class. Okay. And now there is protected. So now, for now, just know that protected is the same as private. So if I, for example, uh, put this function as protected like this, and I try to read from it, I will get the same error. So say uh, call to protected method uh, in there. So protected is exactly the same as private. So once you put something as protected, then just know it's private and can only be accessed from inside the class. So why then do we have two different accessors for private and protected? Well, as we go on learning uh, classes, you see there's a um, something we do that is called inheritance. So like I had mentioned much, much earlier, you can inherit the properties of one class into another class. So I can create another class that extends this class. Okay. Now, if you put something as private, it means the child, the extension, the one that inherits all these will not inherit the private properties at all. So the private properties remain the property of the original class. But if you put something as protected, it remains private, but it can also be inherited by the child. Okay, so that, that is the difference. So you can inherit a protected uh, item which acts exactly like a private one so you inherit the protected one but you cannot inherit a private property so that is the difference between private and protected but otherwise they are exactly the same and then there is a static okay so static I think you saw earlier uh, in a previous video that static is a an accessor that means if you put something as static it's not part of uh, it's not going to be part of the of of the instance sorry it's not going to be part of the instance it's going to be part of the class itself now static requires a video of its own so i'm going to show you uh, more about static in the next video